You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hunter Louie Podcast. This is episode number 117 of Essential Indiana's Favorite Podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. Today I'm joined by co-host Dakota Davis, guest host Mason Roddinghouse. No, he's not a real guest host. He's our intern. intern. He's the intern. We do have guest <laughs> guest host Cade Coger and producer Chris Guffey. Hello. Today's episode features just the four of us as well as Chris and, well, I guess... Four of the, us plus one and all these damn bugs that keep yeah. flying around the building. <laughs> The three hosts, a producer, and an intern. Um, we are going to be talking to you, all of you guys about what we think uh, we look for in terms of employment. What is important to us whenever we are searching for a job, and uh, what uh, what should employers be offering as far as benefits and compensation go in the 21st century? And we are also going to be getting a farming update from Cade Cover. Uh, we all know that the farmers have had it a little bit of a rough season this year. So we're going to hear I don't want to talk uh, about it. what what it's like now. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you stick around to the very end to hear your, um, can I say who's rag today or is that trademarked? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you can definitely use it. Henry County Ag today. <laughs> that, yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Coger Ag, <laughs> Ag now. Uh, this show is about our lives in rural Indiana. We're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we'll provoke you. Other times we'll just make you laugh. But hopefully you'll always learn something new. We've been trying to do something a little bit different here uh, with the show uh, the last couple of weeks. We really haven't had any guests booked. It's been we, – we throw out a topic. It's not fully fleshed out, and we've been, uh, we've been trying to dissect it as a group. So we're going to do the same thing this week. Last week we talked about rural broadband, and uh, we had some, some strong feedback. People really enjoyed that. And uh, I got a message from, uh, from uh, Shannon Tom, who's the uh, CEO of the R- local REMC, and he said, you guys surprisingly knew a lot about what you're talking about. And I said, well, thanks. Um, and so that was, uh, that was good. And hopefully we'll have him, uh, we'll have him on following I, the, uh, the application. I hope Shannon appreciated that. I said that their application was better than yeah, new list. You probably companies. buttered them up enough that, uh, that's why, <laughs> that's why they liked us. By the way, we want to thank everybody for joining us on a Wednesday night, uh, special Wednesday edition of the show. We, uh, typically are a Thursday program, but, uh, there's a family wedding and everybody indulged me and we moved the schedule just, to, just to benefit me. So thank you all very much. Um, me. so this, uh, <laughs> Mason, you just, you, you just got lucky to, to show up. Chris is clicking around, doing things, playing. What are you doing? Or not Chris. What's your name? Uh, Dakota. Um, I'm Jerry. looking for, uh, some show notes. You're looking for show notes. We don't have show notes in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so tonight's episode, we are going to, uh, we're going to talk about employment. There was, uh, an IBJ, the Indiana business journal or Indianapolis business journal. Uh, they have a podcast and something they talked about this week really tweaked me or got me interested um, because we've we have the biggest gap right now uh, between people that want jobs and people that don't have jobs we've got way more people uh, low impl- unemployment is way below our um, our frictional unemployment number basically five percent yes. or below is considered full employment we're somewhere around three percent now um, so employees get to be a little bit choosier right one of the things that millennials are looking at, according to this uh, podcast by the IBJ, uh, is volunteering and time off, basically PTO time to go do volunteer work. The topic to me, I first was aware of it, uh, Gannett, the Indianapolis Star, their employees get to get to take three days off a year and do whatever they want to with them, volunteer-wise. So as long as you're volunteering for some sort of a non for profit or some you know a legitimate volunteer, you don't just get to waste a day off. But if you're volunteering, you get to say, yeah, that counts. It's a paid day off, and and you get to support a charity you want. It's not a employer directed. Yeah, we're all going to go work at the food bank today, or you know we're going to direct you there. You get to decide what you're going to do. And I said, man, that's a really interesting idea. That's pretty um, neat. And uh- and. Apparently, Salesforce does it as well, and and I think maybe Eli Lilly does in Indianapolis. Um, And I know the place that I work, we're constantly looking for people. Uh, It's a big deal. 
Um, so that's, that's kind of what we want to talk about today. That's the, that's the big topic. That's the big thing we're going to chew on. And just like last week, it's not entirely fully fleshed out, but we're going to talk about it as a group and, uh, and have the discussion. If you want to add to the discussion, uh, we, uh, we are a podcast, but we also have a, a live uh, feed on this side, uh, on the free side. If you follow us on Facebook, there's a live chat that happens during the show. Um, and then you can always email us, Dakota at Boss Hog of Liberty or Jeremiah at Boss Hog of Liberty dot com. Either or, and uh, you can tweet us during the show too. I'm at Jeremiah Morrill if you want to tweet us or Facebook message, whatever. Whatever means of communications works for you, you can probably hit us up that way. Uh, we have a few people to thank before we fully get into the show. Uh, maybe we're talking about employment because one day uh, we need to start paying Chris and offering compensation, but that can't happen unless we get more people to join our Patreon. Uh, we want to thank the people that subscribe at $50 or more a month on our Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash boss hog of liberty. You can sign up. Uh, Mason is a Patreon member now, and he's at $1.37 a month, right? <laughs> I thought it was like $1.50. What? Did you bump it up a little bit? What do I have I to do to talk? Oh, okay. What do uh, I have to do to talk you into two so it's, Chuck? <laughs> it's so it's it's not a lot of money. We don't ask for a lot from folks, but anything that you can do really helps us out because we have bills to pay around here. But the people that are over fifty dollars a month, uh, we want to give a special shout out to. Those are Chris Bilberry, Christy Avery, Jonathan Phillips, and all the way from. Hawaii, Craig DaCosta. But he's in New yes. Hampshire now. He's LARPing. He's with the, he's, <laughs> he's out there with the pork festers. That's right. Uh, pork not as in, uh, like, like the pork belly videos. Not pork videos. belly. Or G- Guffy, you've been, they, They've uh, been hitting me hard on Facebook with some pork belly. <laughs> you've gone down the, the, I, how to, 101 ways to produce, <laughs> how to, to cook prepare pork, pork, pork belly. belly on it. Sure have. In, in the microwave. Microwave, grill. What, Everything. what sort of appliances do you have at your house for, for preparing food? Stone sticks. You, you have a hot plate? Nope. Grill, microwave, oven, crock pot. You got it all. I got it all. And all I really need is the microwave, crock pot, and the grill outside. You need a Traeger. I need none of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. The Traeger. Have you done pork belly on the Traeger? No, I haven't. Just steaks so far. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Traeger, hit us up. I yeah. love it. <laughs> the Boss Hog Radio presented by Traeger. Oh, man. Uh, there's people out there. If you all want to uh, buy shirts or merchandise, we got that, too, on the uh, the old T-Chimp. Boss, B- T-Chimp.com slash B-H-O-L-1. T-Chip. B-H-O-L-2. Not T-chimp. chimp. T-Chip. <laughs> T-Chimp. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon wish list. If you all want a three-camera shot, uh we can get there eventually, but uh, there's the there's maybe the one day Amazon wish list. I got another message this week about uh, why aren't we why aren't we broadcasting live videos? We're not broadcasting live videos because the camera that we use it does not work anymore. So therefore, we we have this incredibly complicated setup. There's more cords over there than what there is in a NASA base, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, taking that to set up at the courthouse it's- would be. It's less than Would a, be a right trip now yeah. without the uh, without the Mevo. So uh, we're working. We're working on getting these things solved. Two of a kind working on a full house. <laughs> we promise to get the Mevo before we start paying Chris Guffey. I will tell you guys. <laughs> I will Sounds tell you reasonable. guys that uh, the the Patreon is very much worth it. The bonus episode this week, uh, I was <clears throat> I was shamelessly breathless. <laughs> uh, at- <laughs> <laughs> That's some. <laughs> oh man, that was some, good. That was there's good some, one. There is some Garth Brooks uh, on the Patreon. That's uh, that's well worth your donation at any level. Uh, you'll get that. Uh, you'll get that email to you tonight. Absolutely. And everything behind that paywall is uh, is worth it. It's the personal side. So that may have the been personalities. The one of the best Patreon bonus episodes I've ever been a part of. That you've ever been a part of. I've only been a part of about five, six. I still think the Christmas one was better. Was that all behind the paywall? That was behind the paywall. We didn't give that to anybody? We didn't give it out for free. That was, that was my first bombs. in appearance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, join the Patreon. <laughs> it's worth it, guys. A uh, lot of fun. Um, Corey's definitely over here wanting to know if he can get a shirt for some donuts. No. No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> hell no. I don't even have a shirt. Corey. I don't have, I don't have Corey, a box of t shirt, brother. Just charge it on your business account <laughs> and then give us donuts. Charge it, it on your business account. Yep. I'll just steal the donuts and bring them. 
It's farm equipment. That yeah. sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. All right. So we're going to talk about employment. Uh, the, what I want to get into and the conversation I want to have is what motivates you guys. So obviously you want to make, you want to make a reasonable rate. You care about making enough money to pay the bills, but what makes you decide you're going to stay somewhere isn't that extra quarter an hour, 50 cents an hour, or, you know, $500 a year in, in salary. I don't think, at least that's where, where my logic is. Cade, you're, you're self-employed or in mm-hmm. the family business. So this is, you're going to bring an interesting, uh, discussion to this. Uh, I do employ people though. Right. But you're, you're, but you, you're, mm-hmm. you're em- employing or you're working on the hiring side. Yeah. Uh, Guffy, Dakota and myself are all in W2 jobs where we're on the payroll somewhere. That's and true. then Mason, you're, um, you're just getting ready to start your career. Intern so Mason. It's, uh, this is, this is, you know, you'll be able to share from the Tide Pod Eater side from what, Tide Pod. <laughs> what, what you actually care about, what you young whippersnappers actually think matters. Um, in the IBJ article or the IBJ podcast that we were talking about or that, that triggered this, they were saying that millennials are the ones that are asking for this, you know, this, this paid time off. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there. What's, what, I guess, what are the one or two motivating factors for you that says, Hey, I'm going to, I want to be a part of this. Is it teamwork? Is it the people you're around? Is it just all about money? Is it the schedule? What are the things that I'll start with Dakota and Mason will work our way around the room. What are the things that drives you that makes you want to stay there? Short list of things for me, I guess. Uh, or is I, it the work? Is it the actual work? And there's only a couple yep. of places you can do that. Yeah. For me, it is. It's definitely um, the work aspect. I left, I left my last job, which I had, I enjoyed greatly working construction. It was, I had so much fun doing that. Um, however, the job that I have now is more, uh, mechanical work and I really, really enjoy tinkering with things. Um, I, I enjoy just getting my hands dirty and, uh, seeing what, how I can make things work that aren't previously working. But, um, another thing that's important with, to me with a career or a job would be non monotony. So basically uh, changing between jobs, uh, like specific tasks during the day. I can't stand just doing one thing all the time. You don't want to make the same part all day, every day. Right. And even, even whenever I work construction, there were um, one job uh, I was installing conduit for um, HVAC systems. So basically, I'm running conduit in an apartment building for the thermostats, and it was the exact same in same every floor single plan room. Every time, yep. I need I need four of this piece, three of this piece, two elbows, and yep. we're done. And I'm like, this is still way better than a factory job, but I hate it. <laughs> but the good thing about that, and the good thing about the job that I have now, is even if it's something you don't like, then uh, just like there, a couple months later, and it was done, and I moved on to something that different. Um, so that's really important to me. Of course, money is really important to me. Um, I want to be able to, cause you're a whore. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I enjoy money. <laughs> um, in a presentation that was given to us at work, they broke down different generations that work for the company and tried to describe to the employees what is important to other generations around you. And one thing that they brought up with millennials was a work life balance. That's that's not really been important to me. Um, I don't know. It's it. I've ne- that's something I've never really thought about. I just because I enjoy what I do. So it's uh, if I I get called out all the time. If I get called out and work on a storm, it's I'm I'm usually never upset that I'm getting called out because that it's kind of an adventure. It's not a force for you though. You have right. The choice I have the choice. Down. So it's you have the balance true. in your job of well. I don't want to go. I don't right. have to go. I have, it's not I have something going on tonight, so I'm not going to. Right. Because you can, a lot of times in the factory setting, somebody will be, hey, they'll come to you 10 minutes before you're supposed to leave. And they'll say, hey, true. I need you to stay for two or three hours. Yeah, and, and, and I guess so that, that is true. In construction, it really did used to crawl all under my skin whenever it was like a Friday afternoon and you would be walking, getting ready to sign off the job for the day. And then your foreman would come by and go, hey, we're working tomorrow. Screw you. What? I had yeah. plans for tomorrow. And at that point, you know, you're an apprentice or something. You can't say no. Yeah. So I, so I so guess in that really, respect, yeah. You don't get treated with the respect you want to have. Yeah. In that case. And yeah. All right. Mason, what, what about you? 
This is like a focus group is what this is going to turn it's true. into. It's true. Well, I don't know if I can really put much into it because... Well, you're I'm, selecting, right? So you, you're looking at, okay, what career do I want to have? You're going to mm-hmm. be, be a professional drug dealer. Absolutely. Walter <laughs> I you, White. I need you to be a little closer <laughs> to that microphone for me. Um, but you're, you, when you're selecting your career, you're saying these, you know, I want to make X amount of money. I want to work these certain hours. There's motivating factors. Maybe it's, hey, I want to use this all this brain power because I got into Notre Dame, damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I think something that I look uh, like I really considered when I decided what I wanted to study was not only how much they do make because they make a significant amount of money, but it's how much people interaction they have. Because I'm definitely like a people person. Like I, I like to talk. You guys know that, and I never shut up. Like and it. When you're behind a counter, if, if you're working retail as a pharmacist, you're always talking to people, knowing people first name basis, getting to counsel them on their uh, prescriptions and things like that. And they were always asking you questions, and you're always the person looked up to, like to give them the answer. But I think a big thing that's considered now when people are looking for employment or benefits, like as you say, I say that very broad, but a lot of people are into their health insurance and MPTO also, but I'll talk about my Twitter earlier. There it is. Um, but are you getting tweeted? No. Is it a booty call? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also like another thing I looked at once again, jo- go join the Patreon if you understand what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then it all depends on what part of the like type of pharmacy you go into. So Dakota was saying he gets called out or he works, you know, you work a set time and then you have, you do get called out and you get to give them a yes or no on if you want to go out. And it's an adventure where it's either say you work at CVS, you could work a Sunday. They're only open till six in the pharmacy on Sunday, like nine to six or eight to nine all day. But if you go into a different part, you have set office hours where you're, Stayed in I mean, an office. It's and, not your fault they got sick. They can plan on picking their stuff up during business. Your hours, immune system just sucks. Schedule it. <laughs> <laughs> Try harder. <laughs> but, but as I don't want to be that person who works, oh, I'm working this Sunday, but not the next two Sundays I want to work. I'm Monday through Friday, eight AM to five PM job behind a desk. And also get to see my own patients like that. So so the work life balance. So is the work life balance is really important to me because, like, eventually I'm going to have a family. I want to be well, involved I with mean, the family. Maybe, hopefully, you can pa- find the right. Maybe if I can find a girlfriend, <laughs> a wife. He says he's going to. I like your positive attitude, Mason. <laughs> At least we're all we're all pulling for Fair you, buddy. Enough. <laughs> but once it's Doctor Mason, your chances will go way up. <laughs> that once, white, once I that say, white lab I coat and the and the two commas, the Tesla, you'll be, gonna get a you'll Tesla. be pretty good. <laughs> the Tesla cruising down State Road Three, <laughs> swinging into the B Dubs for Thursday night wings. I'll take a pint of Coors. Listen. listen. When you're making pharmacist money, you don't care if they're cheap wings. You could pay That's full true. price yeah. wings. That's right. You don't <laughs> have to wait you for can Thursdays. Go, you can go on a Wednesday. You know what? You'll yeah. be okay. Wednesday. The wings sound good today. <laughs> I can afford it. I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> no, I can't afford it because my Tesla because payment just got taken out. <laughs> because of the student loans. <laughs> so, Cade, we need to ask you if, if uh, all of a sudden you were like, you know what? This is was a horrible year for farming. Mm-hmm. Screw it. I am going to go work for Ag Express because okay. I have all this tractor knowledge. And I've got a lot more talent than Guffy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Well, <laughs> what would <laughs> spread mulch? <laughs> what would you tell Ag Express you needed in order for you to actually consider the uh, employment? Well, I would have to like what I do. Shovel loads of money. I, and also, <laughs> I did go to Vincennes for two years for horticulture and landscaping. So if if farming wasn't to work out, I would probably go with landscaping mm. rather than taking Chris's job. We can start a company. You can Let's talk Chris. after the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, landscaping, like architecture and stuff like that. I really, I learned how much I liked that in college. It's, I went for that as kind of a plan B if anything ever. My yard is your oyster. Didn't, didn't work out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Please. But yeah, I would, Please I would, come play uh, with I would like to do, you know, something I would have to do something that I loved. I wouldn't be able to just sit through a factory job somewhere. Yeah. It's just not me. And you know, some people that's fine, but 
I, I have to do something. Yeah, thank God it. for the people that are yeah. that can go in and out of you know different yeah. factories all day because mm-hmm. they contribute so much to our daily lives. But I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I wasn't going to be self-employed, if I had to work under somebody, um, I spent some time in a greenhouse uh, as an intern for for my time at Vincent's. Um, I would have to like the people that I work with. I know there'd be some stuff you have to kind of put up with when you're just dealing with general public people that you work with, but um, managers, superiors, things like that. I feel like that's a pretty big, pretty big thing. And myself, um, for the people that I employ, I try to be the best guy to work with as possible. I know we were talking about family earlier and having the flexibility to work in and out of families. Um, Things come up things happen, um, adversity, you kind of got to work through it. And I think finding somebody or a place of employment, that's pretty reasonably flexible with things that you have to get around. I feel like that'd be pretty high priority. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. As you're hiring people, what kinds of things do they care about? Is it just the, the rate of pay? Is it the, Hey, I, pay, just, I, I want yeah. to, are you hiring guys? It's their full, their main job or their sec it's their second job. No, nah, it's their, it's their full time yeah. main job. And, um, I, it's just with farming, you have to love it. You, you know, it's a passion. It is. You, you have to love it. You have to really kind of be around do, it. Do they know that you're, that it's not real farming because you have modern equipment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we definitely advertise that this is a uh, new age farming. But you know, there's 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 ability they for might us have to teach to, people. They might have to you know, know how to turn a tractor around a wind turbine. Y- yep, yeah. you might have to work around that one acre patch. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think the people that are looking for jobs that I would that I would provide, um, they've really got to have some kind of experience. I'm pretty good at teaching people stuff, and I'm pretty flexible as far as that goes. But they've got to be able to learn. They got to be teachable. Um, so, so much of of your industry yeah. revolves around timeliness, though. Yeah. So you don't have a whole lot of time to teach mm-hmm. someone from the ground up. Exactly. When when it's when it's go time, it's go time. Right. So it's really hard for me to you know start planting or doing what we're doing, especially with wind and natural disasters, the stuff that we're doing now. Um, wind. Yeah. Wind. Don't well, say that. All, all of our wheat's blown down right now. <laughs> but, but dealing with stuff like that. Um, you know, I've got to be as flexible as they are. I feel like in providing a job where somebody's able to learn, somebody's able to progress. Um, you know, and that's going to come with better pay as well. You know, the more they learn, the more they can do. The more I can say, go do this and not worry about it the rest of the day. The more I'm going to be willing to pay that person. Yeah, Guffy, what do you care about? What's what says I'm going to stay where I'm at, or I'm going to look for something else? What's what are the factors? Uh, obviously, pay is going to be one thing. Um, it's going to be. It, it, I mean, there's less people shooting at you in this line of work than the previous one. Yeah, but the sad thing is, is I would actually go back to Afghanistan today if they said, pack your bags. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say, okay, hold on. Let me somebody, go, let me go lose 40 pounds. No, I'd say, hold on. <laughs> let me go find somebody to take care of my cat. And then <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I'd pack my bag and I'd be on the plane. Tonight. That's what we have an intern for. So. I'll take care of your cat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, meow mix. <laughs> No. Wait. <laughs> Chicken only. You can't feed a male cat that has been neutered uh, seafood or fish because it'll clog up his penis, and then you have to take him to the vet and get it cleaned up. Huh. Wow, it's hey. not after 8 o'clock yet. I don't think you can say penis. You literally just said... Mm. I think anyway, you, might, but you no, could probably uh, say urethra. Obviously, uh, pay is a big Aretha issue. Franklin? Yeah. <laughs> God rest her soul. She had too much seafood. It ended it. Oh, God. We keep, interrupt- <laughs> didn't, we keep didn't interrupting go, Chris. Didn't go oh. through her Aretha. No. So pay, obviously, again. Uh, but no. And, and you have to be rewarded. You, you legitimately have to be rewarded when, when you take on extra, extra abilities and learn extra things and are constantly showing that you want to improve yourself for the company. So then at that point, the company should either financially reward you should reward you with more time off something that makes it worthwhile for you to actually want to better yourself for the company. Because if you're a better person, then you'll be better for the company and the company will succeed better. And then it's just, a, it's just a, a cycle. I get better at this. You reward me. Then I get better at that. 
and it's just a vicious cycle. And when, and because you're more productive, you deserve more money. Right? Yeah, that's it, well, the logic is that you're yeah. making them more money, so you need to be compensated. What about for it? advancement? Like well, advancement into the company. Well, and see that that's another thing. Obviously, you should have have a choice at going vertical in advancement, but in small businesses, that's not always the case. You can't make a vertical movement, but you can make a horizontal movement that still puts you in a better position than when you were when you first started. So obviously advancement's going to be something. And then for me, so that's, that's where we talk about instead of maybe the company can't offer you more money, but they can offer you some of the other things that you find to be rewarding. Yeah. Maybe right. like, and maybe, that's what we're chasing after here is not necessarily the money, but what are the things that you care about? Well, uh, obviously I'd, the flexibility, um, my job is pretty, pretty lenient about if you're sick, you know, you can just call in or if you need to take a half day, if something, something happened and you need to take a half day, they're pretty lenient about, well, if you got the time, go ahead and go. Obviously you can't, we can't do it in the springtime as lenient because, you know, we work in the agriculture business, so we're slammed during that time, but. Well, it's um, not like they're planting anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> building boats, and but they want their stuff. And so, so obviously more paid time off and John Deere arc division flexibility. <laughs> I'm going to start a canoeing company. <laughs> Insurance isn't a big deal to me, uh, just because I very rarely use it at this point. But if I had a wife and kids, that would, that would be an issue for me. I, I would want to make sure that it's decent insurance and not too crazily priced. Uh, 401k is a big issue for me because I'd rather make a little less now, but if you were to put in 7% or 8% of you a match. You care about the match. Yeah. I, I, I care that there's enough there. Um, other benefits like stock options, you're allowed to get stock options. You can buy stock. You can, and, and then you, then when you buy the stock in the company, especially like, so Ag Express, for example, we're a small company, maybe a hundred employees, probably maybe a little more, but, um, we we can buy stock at the end of the year with with um percentages that they give us so then it feels like well we should be a little more productive because the more that the stocks worth the more that our you know more than that we have in our bank for us so just a few things. So you're listening to the Boss Hoggle Read podcast. Jeremiah Morrill, Dakota Davis, Cade Coger, Mason Roddinghouse, and producer Chris Guffey. We are talking about employment uh, and what motivates us and motivates people to uh, to work somewhere. We've got record low unemployment. Uh, it's a it's a buyer's market basically for labor. Uh, if you're if you're selling it, uh, or I guess it's a seller's market, right? If you're selling your yes. labor, you can you can choose where you want to go, uh, and you get to make those decisions. And we're just having an open discussion. About what, uh, about what matters and what you care about. For me, you know, when I was trying to decide what my career was going to be, I, I got a general business degree. I was, I went to Indiana Wesleyan University and I got a management degree. Um, and what I cared about, what my biggest motivating factor was, is I wanted a Monday to Friday job. I didn't want to work in a factory. I didn't want to have to work second shift. I didn't want to have to be, are you digging bug, bugs out of your cup? <laughs> yeah, there, there's a gnat in my cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's protein. Um, for me, I wanted to find something that was uh, that was reliable, that was stable, that was going to have a W two job, and and I cared about vacation time predictability. So if I want to take a week off, I can do that, right? If I want to, yeah, I want to know know what things are going to be. So that was that was what was important to me. Everything else, you learn the business, you figure it out. But the that work life balance is something I cared about. I didn't want to have. I wanted to have enough flexibility in my career to be able to call my own shots or have, have some control over my, my day to day, which I have in my role in the position that I have in the, in the company and what I do or where I work. Um, is I didn't want to have that thing happen to you that you're like, Oh, it's Friday. And they tell you, Oh, well, you need to work Saturday. I'll work a Saturday if I need to here and there. I, I need to understand why. Right. But I sure as hell don't want to find out about it the day before because yep. I value my personal time and I use it for family and for community reasons and other, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I have a podcast that we've, you know, we've been building. Um, it's, so yeah. it, you're you're in control and you're able to plan that. And those are, those are things that I that are important to me. You know, the you know, they used to talk about the. Or I don't know if they teach it anymore, but there's the, the basically the the pyramid of uh, what the hell do you call it? It's like the self actualization pyramid, but I don't know what the actual uh, 
hierarchy of needs. There you go. The hierarchy of yeah, needs. The, the yeah. guy that's the guy that's in college Ooh, still knows what I'm talking let's about. Put it there. The hierarchy of needs. Yeah, it's Ma- it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's exactly. Hierarchy of needs. And yeah. that's that's. Um, I always see. I always thought it was really stupid in college. But oh, no, so I just remember class in seventh grade. Yeah, nobody wanted to hear uh, about it. See, have you ever why- seen the show? Um, I think it's just called Alone. Self actualization's on the top. Isn't that's it? the very top. Yeah, and that's yeah. The, that's the point. Is that it's your trying to get you know you've got your your food your shelter your basic needs and then the higher you get and that's what you that's what you care about so the the, the basically the goal is, is you you set up a job that provides for all of your needs and you can get to that point of self actualization so that at the end you're not worried about I have to have this to survive it's what makes you happy right so this podcast is what makes me happy my community stuff makes me happy my family time makes me happy so that's what you've prioritized. And that's to me the, the driving factor. So I, you know, when I hear the opportunity for somebody to get time off to go volunteer to do what they want to do, that's right there. So instead of burning one of my vacation days, the company, the company says it's important for you to be involved in the community. Please go take a couple of days and do what makes you happy and make the community better. That's, yeah. that speaks right to me. Yeah, we don't have any, where I work, we don't have any days where we get to choose the nonprofit that we work for, but we have days where, um, it is scheduled and we can volunteer to go and work in the community. Um, usually using a, our specific skill sets and equipment that we have available to us. And, um, I've only done it a couple of times now. I've been busy and been called to do other things in the past, but it was, it's, it's really neat. It's a it's really cool experience. Right? Yeah. Super rewarding. So I can, I can definitely appreciate how, um, companies are implementing that and I can see why it's so attractive to potential employees for those companies. Um, cause it is, it's, it's a really, it's a really neat thing to be able to go out and on a day where you're usually swamped and doing your day job and you get to actually uh, give back to the community on, on a day like that. And you get to spend the whole day doing it instead of just, well, I can show up after five o'clock on a Wednesday and I can be there till seven, you know, no, how it typically goes throughout the week. Uh, it's a, it's a different ball game and it is really rewarding and I think it's cool. But, uh, back to one of the things you were saying, um, kind of the independence factor, uh, is, I think is something that I didn't really ever take into account whenever I was looking at jobs previously. Um, however, because of the job I have now, I have a lot of independence in my job. I, by myself in a truck and I get told that something's not working and I go there and I fix it and I'm by myself for the vast majority of the day. And I you have think, to make your own decisions yeah. and you're self led. And I think, yeah. And problem solver. Yeah. That's and thinking, thinking um, about it when you were talking about the independence factor made me, made me like, yeah, you know, that, that is actually really important to me. I don't know. I could, go to, uh, it would be a really hard transition to a job where I didn't have that factor in my, in my life. Like I do now. Your employer trusts you enough to make decisions yeah. and, and you get judged on, did, did things get taken care of? Did, you know, right. It, did, did my stuff break? Did it work? Did the, is, are things flowing well? You know, th- and there's, there's also that feel good. Like if it, if you get trusted to go and do something by yourself and you get it done in a good, efficient manner and it works for forever after it, you don't have to think about it again. There's a lot of pride that comes with that as well. Like, like, wow, that was, that was based on my decisions alone. That's, that's pretty neat. So it's Mason, a neat feeling. Mason is, is you're going to become Mr. Marketable here in about seven years when you finally graduate from Purdue. Um, get that Tesla son. <laughs> What's what's going to drive you? Is it geography? Is it pay? I mean, do you want to work in this community? Do you are you just going to be the highest bidder and you'll go to Phoenix? You don't care. Um, what's what's going to matter? Is um, it going to be if you find some girl that wants an MRS degree at Purdue, and then you just follow her back to wherever she wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of one of the biggest things that I really think about even now is cost of living. Um, well, you got that in spades here in Henry County. That's what I I really. That spice I mean, town, here, that spice in life. Here in Henry County, there's not much need for what I, I mean. There's always a need for a pharmacist. I mean, but not the type of pharmacy I would like to go into. Where here in rural Henry County, 
We have retail pharmacists go to the Walgreens, the CVS, go to one of the um, neighborhood pharmacies through the hospital, and they're all the same thing. You just pick up your normal day prescriptions. Where it's it's penis pills and heart medication is what you're selling. And it's after eight. We can say that. And now. Sudafed. It's a OTC, <laughs> but I still need to check you for it. Uh, but I wouldn't mind living here and driving 30, 45 minutes to my job into whatever is in city, range of the Tesla. Yeah, in range of the Tesla, how many, how much I can charge <laughs> it up overnight, um, so I can get. So you're going to care if they have an electric car parking space that has so free if they, charging. And that's not in Henry County, so I can't work here. Um, <laughs> I just drag an extension cord all the way from Spiceland and hook it up. But that's a big thing is the cost of living because I've debated on. Going out west or kind of does that going, mean Greenfield or like that means like Utah, Utah, yeah. or Utah <laughs> Wyoming. <laughs> I've also considered down in Texas, Grapevine, Dallas area, but all with all that, pay changes and then pay may go up. But your rent on a two bedroom house here in Newcastle, five six hundred bucks. It's going to be about thousand dollars down there if you're lucky. If you're lucky, so it all depends. I wouldn't mind staying around here for the rest of my life because I know a lot of people. You don't feel like a settler son? A failure? We're, we're dirt no, TV. We're settler son. We, um, we're just going gonna to live here in Henry County <laughs> and sit on the front porch and talk about what could have been. Every, every Wednesday night, well, <laughs> cherry, cherry Coke on, the, on the, the porch swing. Mayberry by Rascal Flatts playing in the background. <laughs> Rascal Flatts, I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> I didn't say I liked them, <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about how they want to move as soon as they graduate college or high school. Oh, I'm getting out of here. I've just never been like that. I mean, I've considered places I've been and traveled to, but then again, it's like, eh. yeah, but you can get your own little prop plane and fly out of Newcastle at a Sky Castle airport and go wherever you want to and come back by dinner. I mean, I could, but then it involves me having to learn how to fly the stupid thing. Mayor York can teach you. He's a pilot. Okay. <laughs> I just don't have interest in that either, really. Hmm. I've always wanted to learn how to fly a plane. I think I'm it'd in. be cool, but... Dakota and I are going to buy my planes. Aunt. When I'm 62 and Dakota's almost ready to start thinking about retiring, we'll buy a plane. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna die in a plane crash together, and that'll be the end of the show. My aunt, mm-hmm. uh, she works for Community Health, and she has a friend who's a surgeon at Greenfield. that He flies all over the place, and he just flies out of Hancock um, Municipal, and... Does whatever. They flew down to Florida a couple, I think it's about a month or two ago. Her, her husband, my uncle, and surgeon, they all just went down to Florida for the week and stopped down in Tennessee to refuel and get going. I think it'd be cool do that whenever I want and not have to worry about someone else or wait in the airport, but it's just not. Up I don't know. I'm just, you know, you can. You can live here and get to a lot of places. That's I can the, drive that's my the point. Tesla. Yeah, you can just just put it on autopilot mode and just it'll drive you. Do those movie uh, up on the tablet. There's <laughs> the, those ones that are coming out now. They're like the Teslas that have got like 400 mile ranges. I can, I can do that. Chicago. My, I can do that in my Ford Focus right now. I mean, <laughs> Cade, Cade, do you find that you guys have trouble keeping people, or is it one in our, in our world in the you know? In the steel manufacturing world, it's like we, we have two people. We, or we have three things. We have the damn near unemployable that work for a week. Mm-hmm. You've got the people that make it for a year, and then you've got the lifers. That's kind of what we have is we have those three different classes of people or, cl- or categories of employees, the people that have been there for 15, 20 years, the people that have been around maybe six months, and they finally start to learn something, then they find a better job, and they leave, or the people that barely were able to pass a drug test, and then they were gone in two weeks because they didn't want to come to work anymore. You're, you're dealing with the, the almost unemployable. Mm-hmm. What What's it like for you as an employer? Um, I don't see a whole lot of the unemployable. I, I feel like farming, um, it requires it requires so much experience that kind of it rules them out. Um, if they've not, if they've not been able to hold a, a job at a farm long enough to this have is, that experience, this is why every time that Guffy offers gonna, to, to come work for you, like he has enough experience, yeah, I'm not going to put him. In my, I'm not going to put him in my 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 combine. Yeah, he's definitely unemployable. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> it's really weird because then I fix your stuff when you bring it into work. <laughs> puts it at the front of the line and everything. But yeah, no, we. I think we we definitely look for the lifers. Um, we look for the people that they enjoy what they do. Um, they're looking for a place to work where they're not just an employee. They're really more family. Um, farming is one of those things where you can't just 
up and decide one day that you're going to start a farm. Uh, maybe small scale, like, um, like roadside produce, kind of one of the, like, like what we do. You might be able to do some of that, um, and kind of get your, get your feet off the ground with that. But, uh, large industrial size farming yeah. like we do, that's, there's just so much overhead with it. Uh, it's not very often. I can't go. Somebody. I'm looking for a thousand acres of farmland and I yeah. want to buy all the equipment and start next year. Exactly. So, uh, Finding people that want that type of job, um, like you guys said, um, the monotony of a, of a job, like a factory job, it's not very attractive to a lot of people. Um, we do a lot of different stuff um, from planting to harvest. We do hay and straw. You know, everything that we do, um, even you know, even with the cattle, there's something to do every day, and it's not going to be always the same thing. Um, it changes with the season. It changes by the day. So if somebody's just looking for something that they really enjoy um, in the agriculture, you know, finding a farm that you get along with the owners, you get along with the families, you know, they're going to be as receiving to that as, as that's your place to look if you're wanting exactly. to farm. Yep. Yep. Hmm. There's no losers in farming is what Kay just said. They're all really good people. Do you feel like you have people that, uh, that start working for you because they want to start their own farm? Or do you feel like the barriers to entry are so big that unless you're born into it, it's just not, it's not a, it's a non-starter. Not quite, not on the scale that we're at. Um, with the produce, for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot, there's probably some people that would work maybe for my older brother, Corey, uh, with the produce that they could come on. Eventually and learn. they could get into they it. They could learn the techniques, um, as far as farming that produce, the irrigation, um, setting plastic, setting, you know, setting plants, getting stuff like that going. Um, yeah, you, there's plenty of opportunity there that you could come on and work for, work for him for a year or two and have all the knowledge that you need to go and start your own with and five just acres. Go start in like Wayne County. Exactly. If, if you well, want a reasonable, if you want we to be can't able to get in a, on your market, if you want to have a reasonable no, we, produce <laughs> business, you can compete with us if you want. How many, you need five acres. You think five acres is a reasonable amount of ground or how I mean, much do you I, need? I feel like you could make a pretty good, you could make a pretty good living on. 10 acres. So five to 10 acres yeah. and you could, you could live off of that yeah. if you were doing the right produce. If you worked it right, for sure. Yeah. Wow. That's way less than I thought. Yeah. Everything you guys sell, is it all from you or some of it's like from auctions and other things and it's a, most, it's a mix? Most of it is from us. So we, we produce enough that we, we can produce it at, at wholesale. And so the extra that we provide, that we make, we take to a local Amish auction over in Wayne County. Ooh. And then we'll trade them. We basically we'll sell our stuff there, and then the credit we make from selling, you bring other products back. We'll bring potatoes. Is onions. that the one in like Williamsburg? Yep, that's it. I yep. went there a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's it's tried, interesting. Was it? Yeah. Was I've it, donated uh, just to eat. It's really what sparked my interest was the food. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was good, but I mean, I just come home with about eighty pounds of onions. Well, I think it's I think the concept's super cool how they just auction off everything. Mm -hmm. But I also think like they should have a flat price on everything also. Like where you both get a cut, like they make their cut for selling it for you and you get your cut for providing it where you can just go get what you want and pay them and leave because like, it's just like, Oh, at nine 30, I got to go get a freaking cherry tree because they didn't auction it off Friday night. Mm -hmm. So I think it's super cool though. Well, it's, yeah. not, it's a wholesale auction. It's not a storefront, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's the point. So it's you, not just I just for, don't have the time. It's just not well, for Mason to go there. I'm not going to sit buy. through it's, a whole floor. Buy a raspberry bush. I will and leave. say, though, <laughs> if you're English and you're not Amish, don't expect to get top dollar. I mean, you'll get you'll make pretty good money over there, but it, you, you make to, more money if you're Amish. You have to find an Amish front man. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna need to employ some actors or something. <laughs> you got I, one guy. I don't qualify staff. because of my tattoos, so I can't I can't go over there. But Chris, we need you to grow a beard. <laughs> <Get a tattoo. laughs> tattoos, I'm out. Right, Mason, do you have any tats? No, no. We you, found our man. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me grow this out real fast. You're no longer Mason. Your name is Graber. No, it's Jebediah Graber. <laughs> Mason Adaya. Really, Mason Adaya. <laughs> they're all very cool. They're very easy. You to have an with. original German name. You could Jebediah Rodinghaus. <laughs> You'd be all right. I think I could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I just got. That's not about my. That's not about. Not about that life there. <laughs> What do you think would happen if you fired your Tinder app up in the middle, in the Amish neighborhood? Just nothing, just crickets. Literally, I probably couldn't even get signal out there. Well, that's last week's episode. I think some of them are hiding phones. 
Oh, probably. no doubt. Yeah. How do you, how, you do you, a, how do I buy my doll? A, uh, <laughs> you know, like well, I know. The, oh, we're running up. There's puppy a mill. I know different. for a fact that there was a, a man, um, and I, I believe somewhere outside of Mount Summit, and he had a small engine repair shop, mm-hmm. and he did have a landline telephone in his repair shop where he could take appointments and call people and tell them their engine was done. Yep. Yeah, they're allowed to have a landline. Oh, like, are they? Not, okay. like, not individually into their house, but like if like a business or a shop so or, or not directly in this house or typically like a, in the community, you'll have like a little outhouse mm-hmm. where they can have like a landline phone. And you know, just well, just I, day they'll go one, check their one receptionist. That I, I'm just, I'm I am saying. a frequent visitor of fountain city acres foods. Yep. And I, I go there to get the lunch meat sandwiches and you go in there and like all the lamps are propane and they have skylights. They don't have any electricity. It's cash only, no credit card machines. Of course. So I'm like, Wow, this place really is like the real deal. Mm-hmm. But then there's refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> are they are they LP? Are they run on li- liquid. Propane? They could, but then there's also freshly sliced meats and cheeses. How do they do that? With their hand? Nah, too consistent. They're <laughs> you don't too know. consistent. You don't know. <laughs> you can run anything with a uh, with a water uh, water wheel. You just need you just curious. Need you All I'm it. saying is I've watched that Amish mafia. There's show. also modern restrooms. I've used the restrooms there, and it's not like a composting toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no electricity involved in a modern restroom. You just need to have water. That's true. You need to have a place for it to go. That's true. You just need water pressure. But Lord knows it's rained enough. You need a pump. <laughs> No, you just need you can catch it up high. You just need water ah, above your head. Big rain barrel catcher right on top of the store. <laughs> it's raining enough. It's raining enough. We can flush this week. <laughs> the water's just a little mossy. It's All right, okay. that'll transition us nicely into a farming update. <laughs> Cade, uh, are you all done? You done planting? You good? We're hundred percent planted. Hundred percent. You side dressing corn, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, that's, that's the buzzword this week. Are you, are you side dress? Yeah. What's, well, that, what's side dress? We're side trying. dressing. So typically, um, just speaking from my farm alone, uh, we put all of our nitrogen on pre-plant with anhydrous ammonia. So typically, we'll have all that done before any tillage or planting happens. Uh, because of the rains this year, we're kind of backed up on all of that. So when it came time to plant, we didn't have anhydrous on about half of our corn crop. Now, do you hire a uh, pilot to do it for you since you can't get in the field? No. So we bought a, a applicator to ap- apply liquid 28 and it go- just goes between the rows. It's got knives. Um, it goes between the rows. So as the corn matures, it can use that nitrogen. So that takes care of that. Yep. You should be harvesting wheat right about now. Shouldn't you? Yeah. About- here, here in the next couple of weeks, we'll have wheat ready. It's not really yellow enough. It's not amber enough. Mm, it's get- It's still pretty green, but it's getting there. Um, other than the hail damage, um, probably had eight, Nine percent loss with hail damage there a couple weeks ago. Really? So, and then with all this rain, uh, heavy rains when it's headed out like it is and and ready to go, it's the worst thing for wheat when we get rain when it's ready to harvest. When will uh, when will this wheat be turned into uh, delicious donuts down at the uh, L and K produce stand? <laughs> They've had their first batch. It was at the farmers market last Saturday. Yep. I'm. I want to know if they're it's ready local, to go. Blueberries. locally sourced wheat, or, or do you is, do you guys do you guys save any of your wheat and do stuff with it? Nope. Uber local, or you just you just send it on, yep. send it on down the line. Yep, it normally goes to uh, either Oakville or ADM in Indianapolis, but we don't use any of it for our donuts. What's it used for? Is it regular? Yep, wheat it's thing? food. It's food grade wheat, so it gets used for for breads and and any kind of like cereals and things like that. Right. So you're saying I could be eating your wheat? Could be. You yeah. probably do. Yeah. Yikes! It all gets blended together. Yep. I'm sure Kate has fed you, whether you know it or not. I can't Kate, believe Kate I'm supporting Kate Coger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So what else going on on the farm? Um, uh, like I said, we got everything planted. Um, are you? Not everybody has. It, do you we, feel like the community is still trying to play catch up? They're not quite oh, there yeah. yet. Everybody's still pretty far behind as far as everything that needs to be done this time of year. Um, we've, we've, we've been lucky. We've missed a few rains. I was going to say, we, inside we, there. the last week or and a half, two weeks, we've, there's been pockets of rain but in our micro yeah. community here despite all the rain that we've had we, we've, we've missed had a few some, key yeah. key storms and it allowed us to get done a lot of guys north of us a lot of guys south of us they have not got done um we've even, we we've even been far enough ahead that we've got a few uh we got our first cutting hay done 
we got a little bit of dry hay done for some customers and things like that. Um, but even, See, that's even hay- with that, it's going to be wet hay. I was going to say, back in the day when yeah. I was bailing hay, it was we need like three good days in a row yeah. of no rain because you want to cut it one day, you let it lay, you yeah. rake it, and then on the third day you can actually bail it. Yeah. And you don't want it to get wet because it's going to mold. So typically for us, um, for for our cattle operation, we can we we can bale wet hay. Um, you can cut it, um, tet it that day, and then the very next day rake it and bale it. Um, you want it to be in around sixty percent moisture, and then while you bale it, you spray on an inoculant, and it's a live bacteria that allows it to uh, ferment. Hmm. So that if you can wrap it, we use a it's a plastic wrap, a tube line wrapper. Um, so you bale it. And while you're bailing it, you spray on the the inoculant, and then, then within four hours, hopefully, <laughs> you can uh, put it on a, a tube wrapper, and then it wraps it in plastic. It's those white plastic lines of round bales. People may have seen them. I I posted a video. You were complaining about your brother. Yeah. Well, I posted a video. Yeah, because you can't keep the line straight. <laughs> but I posted a video because people were always ask, "How do you get those bales wrapped the way that they are?" So I posted a video to show people how it was done. Um, but that wrap keeps the oxygen out of it and allows it to ferment. And then it have turns you, uh, into what have, they consider baleage. Have you ever watched, um, you know, Bon Appetit, the food magazine? Um, they have, I've seen Bong Appetit. On, on <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a play on Bon Appetit. Uh, but they got him. You got him. That's He's one dead. of the seven. There's one the right bug there. bug is dead. There's a dead corpse in front of Mason as well. I can see it. I want. I, there's going to have to be an investigation as to why in the hell there are so many bugs in this building. Guffy. It's Guffy's fruity drinks. What did you do? It's all of his fruity drinks. I don't know. I, I, I'm not <laughs> drinking fruity drinks today. <laughs> but Bon Appetit, they have a a series. They have many series of different chefs cooking food on their YouTube channel, and one that Audrey and I are kind of like we watch diligently now is called It's Alive with Brad Leone, and it's him doing cooking tutorials on how to ferment things. Yeah. And he he goes to different places. He travels all around the United States and learns about different fermentation processes. So That's cool. Along with Andrew Yang coming out to your farm, yeah. I think you need to try to get eventually, hopefully, get Brad from Bon Appetit. Yeah, that'd to, be cool. To learn how to ferment hay. Mm-hmm. Is he on Twitter? Probably. I'll hit him on Twitter. Bone Apple Teeth. Gotta check this out. <laughs> You've got a you got an empty promise from Andrew Yang. Have you had you had any more conversations with presidential candidates? No, I've I've really not tweeted at him anymore. I've been kind of following him. He's got a pretty interesting uh, news feed there um, on his Twitter at least. Um, so if you're on Twitter, he's follow a, him. He, he's um, gaining some ground. Yeah, he's at like two and a half percent in national polls, which is up from zero percent pri- prior to the Joe Rogan podcast. So mm-hmm. Yang's got a, a long road to hoe because he doesn't really have, he doesn't have the notoriety that Trump did, but he's also coming from the, I've never won an election in any, any, I don't right. think he's run for office before. He doesn't yeah. have any experience on that front. Yeah. Um, he's got interesting ideas, but, but getting to where he's got a, a presence in a field of 26 or 27 Democrats, we tough. tough. He's got he's he's got very extensive, very detailed policy platforms that he's mm-hmm. running on, and I think that that makes him the best Democrat in the race, as far as I'm concerned. Just uh, just because of how detailed he is and how open and transparent he is with the things that he wants to do. Gabbard and uh, Buttigieg both have my interest on yeah. the Buttigieg. Democrat side. I like both of them too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Joe Rogan, Guffy, uh, Dakota. Our dear leader met Joe yep. Rogan this week. It's true. I saw a picture. He's been uh, producer Chris for the Ms. Pat podcast. Mm-hmm. Pat and down. It, the Pat it, Down. The Pat Down. It's all one word if you're searching for it in iTunes or Google Podcasts or wherever. So, so it, that can kind of trip you up. It's the Joe Rogan know. episode that was recorded yesterday, Tuesday, June 18th. I don't know if it was released today, June 19th, or if it was released yesterday. Uh, it was... It was Release this morning is okay. whenever I had the notification. So it's, it's the, uh, the... It's episode 1,312. We're close. <laughs> so Spangle, you said, in the first 15 minutes is mentioned. Yes, on he the is. Uh, by Joe. Yep. 
Uh, he, he's, and he's mentioned pretty regularly throughout it. Just yeah. As Chris. Yeah. yeah I, white I, boy Chris. White boy Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make the distinction that within the first 15 minutes of the episode, Chris Spengel is already being criticized by <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> just met the guy. Because of his political opinions. <laughs> I told I told Chris to make sure that he tells Joe Rogan that I personally am a big fan back to the news radio days, and I'm still pissed at Phil Hartman's wife. His, I've you know, never watched a single episode. Oh, man. That is, you really do need to watch it. He played a great, I would he played, like to, he played I, the maintenance guy. I think he just needs to bring back Fear Factor. Fear you know, Factor was good. But I, I, they news tried. Radio, I think he for guys that are podcasters, they went, they went with Ludacris. Do, do yeah, I, they did do that, didn't they? <laughs> you, you need on uh, what? Ga- you, game Show Network? Yeah. What is it even on? Yeah, uh, I, I listened to it. Uh, he just did a, an interview with Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson's kind of amped up his podcast game now. Oh, cool. So, um, it, Rogan did a two part episode with him, and uh, it was really weird listening to Joe Rogan being on the other side of the interview process because I've listened to him like I've listened to hundreds of hours of him interviewing people. But uh, he talked about news radio and Fear Factor and how much he just despised doing television. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a good looking guy. He could like pull whatever. Like, I love being on television every day. He uh, he actually was uh, was crying. Whenever he was talking about Fear Factor, okay, I'll take that. So there were some, like, <laughs> he said that there were some really emotional scenes, and he he came up with one about this woman and her daughter winning, and he he was like, he's like, I'm crying now. He's like, that was like 12 years ago. All like, right, and then Jordan Peterson, who's also a very emotional man, he was crying too, and I was like, I was like, in I don't, I don't, this isn't. Made me feel uncomfortable just listening on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> In Boss Hog tradition, I'm going to awkwardly transition us now because we're going to run okay. out of time. The last thing that we wanted to talk about today, and it's not that big of a deal, but I wanted to talk about the laziest you are. What's the laziest <laughs> thing you do? Because I, if you follow me on social media, on the Facebook, June 16th, June 17th, June 18th, I realized... <clears throat> there's a big blue tote that's been sitting in my living in my dining room <laughs> by the front door that I thought was an empty tote. I stubbed my toe off that. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. That when blue I walked tote, in. that blue tote has been sitting there. I looked in it and I realized that it's full of Christmas plates that we were gifted by Sarah's grandmother uh, in, in the holiday season. I actually think you should get a big old curio cabinet, put it right there in the dining room and display each one of those plates we we're, we're displaying a, a a four generation collection of salt and pepper shakers that I inherited. <laughs> someday, when you accidentally get commit, uh, really serious with a woman and you get married, you it's all uh, accidental. <laughs> Sarah, you heard <laughs> that it was accidental. Is it one of those blackface? I, I agreed to one. Yeah, there's a there's some there's a few. <laughs> they, go back, they go back multiple it's, it's generations. <laughs> These salt and pepper shakers it's go back great. multiple generations, and some of them. Would they were different not, times, okay? Would probably not be commercially available now. Uh, some came from the islands. They, they were definitely things that were... CNN today. <laughs> Sounds like uh, some excuses for racism. <laughs> they're uh, they're historical uh, items. Apologists. Some of them are from some of them are from before the war. <laughs> the so anyway, war. oh boy, um, <laughs> the war, Vietnam, World War One, World War Two. We don't know. Uh, Spanish American. Yeah, I mean uh, Roosevelt. <laughs> Danny has uh, the Civil War house. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so I we've got. I discovered that we have these salt. These not these salt and pepper shakers. These plates that have been on in my dining room, and I was trying to declutter. We've got family coming in. Sisters getting married. I'm like, I'll clean this place up a little bit. And I'm just like visually, what's here that doesn't need to be here? Because it's just become a fixture in the house. And I'm like, well, damn it. I have to go. If I'm going to put these up in the attic, I got to get them back out. And in a mere 120 days at this point, is it even worth it? I took them up. I did. I did move them upstairs. But I'm like, we're, we're past halfway, right? We're 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 seven months in. Hey, why turn back now? Just put right. them in the corner. So that's that got me down this rabbit hole of what is the laziest thing? Like the thing you don't do, the thing you don't get around to, that you don't really care. But you just put up with it. But somebody's going to look at you and go, "You dumbass!" Like, and then we'll start with uh, we'll start with Dakota and work around. Is there is there just a pure lazy thing that you do that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense? And somebody's going to laugh at you because this is confession I have, time. I have uh, two of them, or I guess three that come to mind. Um, one is just like a general overall thing, and that is I'm I'm pretty particular about keeping uh, my spaces clean and decluttered. But that usually 
I'm usually satisfied by just throwing things in drawers without any regard of what actually goes into the drawer. And do you then, know in your mind what things are, though? <laughs> yeah, I do. You find I, stuff, so you're like, I know it's in that drawer. Yeah. I just know that it's not autistically organized. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> where did I put my earplugs? And I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, yep, in the drawer by the bed. That's where I put them. And it's like, why would, why would earplugs that I wear <laughs> only when I'm mowing and weed eating be in the drawer by my bed? But you know, because I took them into the bedroom and I, I took them out because I had because to pee you, in there. Because you were uh, ignoring your wife until yeah. the last that's possible. That's the drawer minute. that's supposed to have the Glock in it, though. Like. Where his, that's where his earplugs, his sex toys, and his clock are at. That's where they're all right there. There's two drawers. My <laughs> nightstand has two drawers. Audrey has a nightstand, too. Audrey actually does not have a nightstand. Her nightstand is her old makeup drawers from the old house. We still haven't gotten around to this finding a matching set. This conversation got very, very real. <laughs> we're just on that topic tonight, aren't we? Just the bonus? That's right. But then uh, one of the other, I think the... The top of my laziness pyramid would be <laughs> self actualized laziness. <laughs> would be at the very beginning of the year, I decided to clean out my garage and move my lawnmower into our mini barn. In the process, I realized I needed to build a set of ramps for the lawnmower to get into the mini barn. And I went out and found a a two by twelve, and I found the little brackets that go on the end of the two by twelve to make them into ramps, and I snugly fit them on there, and realized that they didn't come off with a good pull, so I just never bolted them. <laughs> 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 They're still in there, and they they work. I they don't fall off, and it's it's okay. I got one more confession on that same side, <laughs> and I have not. I, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to fix this. And then uh, I guess my my third. Uh, uh, top laziness thing would be uh, whenever I'm done using tools for or remodeling our house, whenever I'm done using like a drill or something, um, I just like leave it. Yeah. <laughs> I just like shove it in the closet. I'm like, I'm going to need this again eventually. And you'll here. get better at that as you, if you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the I, tools around. I find my tools in the yard in the weirdest places. How did he get a hold of that utility cannons, knife? Cannons just fixing trees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I I have a, a sump pump that I replaced uh, when I bought the house in 2013, and I rerouted the plumbing for it, uh, and I never glued the PVC. Last winter, it came off, and I just kind of shoved it back together because PVC pipe will generally hold. You don't have to yeah. do it. So I future-proofed it so I didn't have to mess with it again. I noticed yesterday that it, it once again had come undone. And I'm literally in the next month, month and a half, going to have somebody come in and, and reroute all of that out mm-hmm. into some drain lines. So I'm like, ah. I don't know if I have to go get yeah. in the water. <laughs> I can just turn the sump pump off for a month and this guy can deal with it when That's it right. comes back out. Do I need to get in there and get wet? And it's one of those it, things where you just or go, can I just ignore it for, ah, <laughs> can I it's ignore fine. it? Cause I know it's going to get solved eventually. So Mason laziness. Well, before time. that, I had a uh, question asked, not in the chat. Kate with the roadside stand mm-hmm. and you guys use the honor system out there, you know, yep. Do you guys ever have any problem with that? Uh, if because I know out at like was it Saunders, their sweet corn or whatever, I don't. They'll have people take bags out there and like Souders little, down in Souders, Souders. Yeah, yeah. They only allowed like a certain about amount of bags a week or at a time, and so I don't. I don't want to encourage people just to steal stuff. Yeah, um, obviously, as as long it's as Corey's money, not yours. Well. Well, <laughs> we all work for it. As long as they're not kicking the door in and taking the money box or taking power tools, pick, taking stuff like that, which has happened before. Um, if if somebody you wouldn't leave your power tools everywhere. If somebody, hey, look, I left a drill in the like pile. Taking the food, yeah. you're like, ah. Uh, if maybe somebody, really hey, need that's it. my exactly. thing. Exactly. If it's somebody's like, taking food, if somebody's okay, desperate enough, take I'm it. I'm happy to provide that. Okay. That's kind of the way that goes. And there's and also more, cameras everywhere. There's cameras, and more times than not, the food that we the the stuff that's left on the stand overnight, mm. most of that gets thrown out in the morning. Yeah, it, it's bad by you know by morning. Yeah. So, so if you can, if they've got to stop in when somebody's not there, and if, if they're going to take food, the only thief that I can, you know, handle is somebody that's thieving for food. You can be. But since you have the cameras, you can kind of make the distinction. You're yeah. like, 
But that that lady pulled up in a 2019 Durango. She doesn't need to be stealing my food. Yeah, she's well, got a $400 <laughs> car payment Even so, that's fine, but just don't, $400. don't steal that's mums. Light. Don't steal flowers. <laughs> don't steal decorative stuff. Don't steal, don't steal pumpkins <laughs> and throw them at people's mailboxes. That's shitty. Don't steal all Correct. of my watermelons. Take one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, if mean, it's there's a difference between if it, comes down, down, if it comes down to desperation and somebody's got to feed their family, absolutely, we've got plenty. Come get it. Yeah. But other than that, don't. That doesn't pause mean me. just go. Does take that include it, my cat? Excuse. But. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't want to encourage it, but if you absolutely have to, I'm glad to provide it. Does okay. that include my cat? Feeding no, my family. Your, no, your cat can't have anything except cat, chicken. It can't have seafood yeah. or beef or whatever the heck it eats because it, it clogs its wiener. It's past yeah. eight. Guffy, did keep you keep your dick problems to yourself? Cat. <laughs> Guffy, did you so, did you celebrate Father's Day with the cat? I did. I did not. But <laughs> he get you a present. <laughs> they bought. He bought it soft food. Stuck a candle in it. Your your wife did uh, wish me Happy Father's Day though. Got her whole milk. Daddy. Of course, it she did. whole milk. Him, whatever him. it is. It's a boy. All right, Mason. Confessions. Um, you, you forgot. Do you have anything you're you're lazy. ashamed ashamed about? I'm a pretty lazy person overall. Like <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> I got up. I got up today around noon. It's like when it comes to school, though. Like I mean, I stay up pretty late studying, but I'm pretty lazy when it also comes to studying. Um, Do you start papers at the last possible? Well, minute? actually, it's nice because I didn't have to write one paper. Yeah, this I've year. I've never started a paper or a presentation. To I've the never last minute. exactly. Uh, I did work on a couple month long project, but every time we did it this past semester, we ended up getting a hundred on it. It's all right, but we did it throughout the semester, and every time we did meet up to work on it, three days before it was due, and it was literally it was something that needed a lot of thought. We were taking different Excel's and access documents and working on them and getting all the these budgets and costs of everything and trying to work it out with the business plan and everything. And we did it all to probably total four days when we had really 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 10, 12 weeks to work on it. But I'm just, I'm just lazy. I mean, <laughs> it's, like I don't, deferred maintenance. I don't it's forget not clutter. It's, uh, oh, I live a cluttery life also. Is it, is it lazy or lack of motivation? Lack of mo uh, I don't even know if it's that. You know, I, I want to do both? it. It's about both. I, I want to <laughs> do it. I want to, you know, clean my room up a little bit. Yeah. But then it's also like, uh, that fan feels good on my face. I don't want to move from under the covers. I'm clean your room, bucko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> problems of a 19-year-old. Um, <laughs> Just wait until you have an but, entire residence to worry about. Yeah. But, I mean, I... I guess when it comes to being lazy, uh, I keep my car pretty cl dirty. I mean, you proud finish, of that? No. That's something you're proud of. It's pretty clean right now, but like, finish water bottle, toss on the floorboard, and drivers on the passenger side. You animal. Yeah, uh, you know, finish a piece of candy <laughs> ah, over there. Did but, you use your own money to buy this car? Well, it started out that way. <laughs> Do you want We're the backstory on the yeah. like, like And it's funny because my dad's watching, intentions. so like I get fact checked on this. So <laughs> I'll get texts here in a second. So I used to drive a 1999 Chrysler 300 you, leather seat. You really slummed it, a car from before you were born. Um, I was born in '99. <laughs> so, so that means it was a it was, 98 car. Yeah. yeah. Um, my but, first car was a 65 Pontiac Bonneville. I remember your brother having that when we were in 4 HD. <laughs> I, I was looking at Bonnevilles, but. My I, first car was an 87 Bonneville, for the record. <laughs> Not nearly as cool as the, the one every Cougar boy had. I got to drag it out and get it going, man. So I got the... I'm all right like, in it again. Yeah. I, I started working at Kroger, you know, eventually quit. And I got a job at Mancino's, and I worked there quite often because I didn't play winter sports. I was really working. And I told my dad, hey... I'll you were play. more of a mathlete than an athlete. Yeah. No, I was never on any of those teams either. But I told him straight up, I was like, hey, you get a loan for a car... Eight thousand, nine thousand dollars. I'll pay it monthly and pay w w a portion of the insurance. And so we started out good. I think I made two payments on the car, and then finally, like I quit my job because they wouldn't work around schedules, and it kind of got a little rough. And then a couple months, I think it was like maybe three months later, I totaled it. <laughs> um, I totaled the car, so we ended up buying it back from insurance and replacing the parts that were broke on it. So we got that. It kind of hurt the insurance and 
everything, but that's the story of that car. And eventually you're, uh, this is the car you're driving now. Yeah. So I drive the, so you drive a total Ford. Yeah. And, uh, did you, did your dad end up having to make the payments or you've kept up on it? I think he made two payments before we destroyed it. Well, I destroyed it. We do you have a mouse in your pocket? (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Siri on my phone. Um, but he did pay out of pocket to get it back from the insurance and yeah. So there we go. All right. Confessions of a Coger. So I live out in the county. I don't have to pay for gold lined water pipes and I have to put softener salt in my uh, softener system. I live in the county. I have city water, but I still I'm use a softener. Terrible <laughs> at, <laughs> at remembering to keep that thing full. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that's probably my number one. Uh, I feel that too. Yeah. Mine goes for almost a year because yeah. I have city water. So it's not, doesn't need a lot of treatment. Yeah. But I can almost go a year, and it has a little counter on it that says how many days I can go. Really? It knows. So it's like, hey, you've got a month, asshole. You better go get Is that also connected to your Wi-Fi? Not yet. (laughs) (laughs) I need to just set a reminder on my phone. Siri, she's smart enough to keep me informed on that stuff. You say, hey, Google, add softener salt to my shopping list. Um, Number two is kind of a toss-up. Getting ice out of my freezer there's not been very many times that uh, I've gotten ice out of the freezer and not dropped a cube and I pretty much always kick it under the, kick it under the <laughs> fridge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why there's water yeah. damage under the fridge. That's, it's weird. That's kind of something that I do. Uh, Your dogs don't go after it. My dogs are uh, like no, aggressive. No for the ice. They love Ruger, the ice out man. Of the he will not get off the couch for a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting so he's, older. He's lazy. He just won't man. You let yeah, your dogs he's on terrible. the couch. Yeah. Yeah, he's got his own. He's basically got his own couch. Um, and then uh, probably the uh, number he's a good three. Boy, so. I've got my own gun range. Um, keeping it clean's. I'm pretty lazy about that. Picking up brass sucks because it's in gravel. Um, just a lot of time. I need to get my kids trained on that. <laughs> <laughs> a penny, a penny, yeah. a case in case. I mean, really, other than that, I'm pretty good about everything else. You know, may- maybe keeping my garage clean, um, stuff like that. I think uh, I don't like to half-ass anything. I like to whole-ass everything. That's kind of my motto. Yeah. Whole so, ass the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Guffy, are you, uh, everything's in its place. You're perfect. No, nothing to confess. <laughs> oh, hell no. What's, what's your problem? Well, first off, Mason, we got to talk about your car situation. <laughs> Don't look at it. It's pretty clean right now. It's By got the way, golf clubs in the back. It, the back seat, I swear, it stays clean. <laughs> It's, I mean, Listen I up, ladies. That, in case you need that for activity. <laughs> You've literally just said that you throw empty water bottles in the back. Well, I clean it. If you finish with candy, you're just, I cleaned about three days ago. <laughs> now, if you like my driver's like door in the side, I think I've got a bag of Gardettos if I get hungry. <laughs> There's like two Kool Aid packets because when I do- go donate plasma, <laughs> I go to Kroger and buy a 25 cent thing of Kool Aid <laughs> and to get my cash out. And, I think there's some pins and pencils. Floor? Eh. I think there's a rag on the front, um, <laughs> in the front driver. With chloroform side. on it? No. It, <laughs> no. Does this rag I, smell like chloroform, do you? <laughs> yeah. No, I use it because I took the power washer out to my grandma's power washer um, house the other day, and there was there's a thing you can put like soap in. So, like, if you take the low pressure, right. you can like wash right. your car. It's not like a twist on lid. It's like a little rubber you stopper. You lost the lid, so you have to Well, it, it. when I t- scooted it in, it popped it off, and it leaked all into my seat. So I got a wet rag and really tried to get it out. Didn't do too well, so I just threw it in my front floorboard. <laughs> if you guys are uh, listening in the car or at home, we want you to confess. We'll, we'll try to read these next week uh, on the show. Mark Brim is going to join us. And you guys uh, email Dakota at boss hog of Liberty, uh, com. Jeremiah at boss hog of com. You can tell us your uh, your laziest uh, laziest deal. I just realized another one as we're talking. You were talking about pressure washing. I got on. I was so lazy. I didn't want to pressure wash, so I I bought the wet and forget. Yeah. And then I forgot that I bought it, so it sat in the garage for a year and a half. <laughs> I took it way too literally. <laughs> and I bought I bought the sprayer and I bought the wet and forget. So at, at this point, it'll be. I finally applied it last week. I mixed it up and put it on. So from the time I bought it to when it's supposed to have worked six months, it's going to be two years from when I bought it to when the garage is actually clean. But it's been applied, so we're going to check. That's but hilarious. that might be the laziest thing I've done in a while. Was I bought the wet and forget and forgot about it? I don't know. Uh, I, that would be easy to do. I think that the. I think the that the Christmas tote. 
takes the cake. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I keep my car extremely like uh, pretty much immaculate if I can, because wants to keep that Kelly blue book for real. Well, this is the, this is the first like brand new car that's had power windows, had an AC in it. Zero that rust. AC that I didn't have to put in myself, a radio I didn't have to put <laughs> in myself. Would, what you would call a modern car. <laughs> yes. So I keep this thing immaculate, but my house, you know, if, if I throw a shirt on the, on the, on the floor as I'm walking in, Stay out of in work, there for a couple of I'm weeks. like, ah, whatever. When you're at home, do you wear clothes? Yeah, I sure do. He wants to keep so, it away from the cat. He's a cat can't. So that's see probably the the big big thing is I'm just like ah whatever. But I keep my. But then the second thing is if I don't have any plans on like on a Saturday or Sunday or a Friday night, which is surprisingly I will very often. You'll be at Thomas Street I will, this weekend. I will binge watch like three. Three seasons in that weekend. <laughs> what? <laughs> of anything. anything. Like, I don't care. Like, you can hit me up with just like TV shows. And if I haven't seen it, ask me over the weekend if I didn't have any plans. I, I'll tell you about the first three seasons. I, I like to watch videos on YouTube that make me feel lazy. I like that too. And, and then it motivates me for the whole next day. No, like, I, I'm there. My, my best friend, Trin, who you guys met at the parade, can attest to this. Not only, Thought we were best friends. I don't. We all feel a little slighted right now. <laughs> I yeah, we were whoa. best friends. You did take me to the Indy 500. Uh, yeah. Richard Roddinghouse is uh, saying that uh, Mason only paid one payment on the car. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd get fact checked. <laughs> but yes. you made one payment or you missed one payment? I made a payment. Oh my god! But no. <laughs> so if she'll message me at like noon, and if she knows if I don't answer, I'm either a binge watching or. Or, or just sleeping, like I'll just you sleep. do take a lot of naps. Yeah. Well, I, at lunch, we get an hour lunch. If just, I if I eat at the Iron Kettle, I'm in my car for 45 minutes sleeping, <laughs> straight up. I'm like, hey, you guys need anything? I'll be in the car. They'll come. AC out. blasting. Sometimes he's got it. Might I'm not a, want it. I'm not a nap guy. If you uh-huh. ever see me taking a nap or hear that I took a nap, you're not feeling well. Yes, I'm. I'm very sick. This spring, <laughs> I took a lot of naps in between in rows in the tractor. I don't know what that means. Kate. No, it means like, the tractor does its own thing. It would just beat me awake and then turn it and then I hit the button. And then That's because it. you had like you had yeah, no time you, to plant, yeah. so you you planted for thirty hours in a row, <laughs> mm, roughly like forty five. Yeah, be heroic. Let's let's <laughs> let's embellish. I don't know if there's a third thing, but I'm sure there is. All right, we're getting to final thoughts. We're we're at that point in the show. Has everybody enjoyed the new format, by the way? The just we we go from the riff. How how are we feeling about it? this? Has been an experiment the been last good. couple of weeks. Sure. I don't know if we, I like it's being not in been, this chair. But. We haven't been fenced in. There are no fences. Yeah, here today. we can see your face. We can't see Cade. So really, Cade's more yeah. attractive. He should have should have yeah, Cade should have sat there. Cade is a sexy Cade bitch. Cade is but, married. <laughs> I am not. Cade, so Cade I need to continue show, to sit here. I, I like Cade in this chair because he shows off his arm tat, but he hides that neck tattoo that might get him suspended. Yeah. He he can like slyly just be sitting here and bust him. Just just make him make him just <laughs> make that tractor dance. Oh, she thinks my tractor is sexy. Uh, and just both of them. Pow, pow. You know I can't do that. Mine just start hanging there. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, Guffy, you got anything to anything to promote? Anything that's going on? Uh, let's see. I've got three things real quick. One, my nephew won the coach's pitch Little League Championship yesterday. So congratulations to him and his Go team. Go Cardinals. The, exactly. My and cousin was on the Rockies. I think uh, we lost you probably. You probably did because we went 13-1 in the regular season. Did he smash the, the, the mayor's team? Uh, I think we did. We usually was like, I think they beat everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, so I have uh, a friend whose nephew plays on the mayor's team. And he's like, I see all the other teams getting better and we're just getting worse. (laughs) So I was like, burn sucks to be you. But, uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, (laughs) second thing is, do you guys see this new thing? Like what Clinton County's doing? They're wanting to charge. I think it's like $10 a day, 30, 30, 30, $30 a day. If you get arrested and held in jail after 
after the first 72 hours. Are you kidding me? <laughs> who, I think we got rid of brilliant de- idea was I think this? we got rid of debtors prisons in this country. I don't I don't know if that's the appropriate thing to do. I, I just don't understand who who in their right mind thought, "Hey, you know what? These people are already hurting. Let's go ahead and charge them $30 a day for doing something stupid with their life." Are, are you kidding me? I think that works up to like 10,800 and some odd change. I'll tell you what I think. I think that I, that, swear. I think that that will discourage inappropriate behavior if you got to pay us. I swear, but man. I, if you... Make them pay literally and figuratively. Yes. <laughs> there is no way that would fly Tough in the Henry County. Henry <laughs> County already love. gets enough crap because we have an awful jail. Imagine, oh, uh, here's $30 a day to stay in our hellhole. How, how, <laughs> how are you going to get blood from a turnip, as, as Cade said? How? Yeah. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. And then uh, number three. Uh, <laughs> that was only number two, wasn't it? Oh, no, that yeah. was number three. Uh, <laughs> I guess three is next. <laughs> oh, and he's going to be in charge of filling our prescriptions. I'm going to be a pharmacist. <laughs> pharmacist. <laughs> don't get my dick pills wrong. <laughs> uh, number three. Um, I think Jeremiah is probably the only one that knows, but my birthday is Sunday. I'm turning dirty 30. The big 3 0. So. Y'all missed my birthday. Yeah, it was we, the 14th. I wouldn't say I missed it. It's okay. Yeah, I may have got like that you Facebook get, notification. Do you guys feel like you're getting screwed on the uh, Father's Day birthday thing? My dad has the same problem. He's the 15th. No, I'm good. And we, he gets doubled up on every year. You have to have a girlfriend to have I didn't kids. get invited to the party. So. Put cool. it there. <laughs> Boom. I think I was working. Kate's like, Kate's wanting to blame me for not doing anything for his birthday, but didn't invite me to the party anyway. So I'm only, tw- I'm yeah. only, I'm only 29. It's okay. Yeah, you didn't say nothing. I better get at least a stripper for my 30th. I thought that you were 28. Nope. Yeah. Well, I was. was. I thought that you just turned 28. Did I just hear that you need me to hire you a stripper for yeah. your birthday? Or, or do you want her to come to the house or, or do you want to go somewhere to see We can her? just go to Nashville. We'll go. There we go. We got a plan. <laughs> we got a plan. Same thing, only different. So, you didn't even get to experience Dakota's bachelor party. No, I'm still upset about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kate. You would have been Our one, relationship you, hadn't been developed. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think you guys had met yet at that point. I don't think, uh, I think Kate, so. you would have been the one person that had a good time. Oh. At, at that at that <laughs> venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was it was literally It was the, rough. We I guess we have to do this. Um it would have been an obligatory trip. It, it seemed like a place that you needed to pay thirty dollars a day to be in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a bad sign when everybody brings in their case of warm beer. Yikes! <laughs> anyway, all right. Final thoughts from uh, from from Cade. Um, I don't really think I have anything today. Um, pontoon uh, pontoon tra- planners. Yeah, we did our best. We're trying. Um, I know everything's not going well, but. If if anybody can handle adversity, it's farmers. So, I have know, a question. Hats off to everybody out there that's worked a lot here the last month. I have a farming question. Mm-hmm. Do you listen to a bunch of podcasts when you're in there? Um, nothing. F- not a whole lot farming related. Is that where you're going with? No, that? no. I mean, like when you're in the tractor. Is for that your hours podcast? On end. That's your podcast sanctuary. If if I have my choice, all I do all day long is listen to podcasts. All right, multiple podcasts. No, that, that's what I I like about like has I it, I typically try to take the calls that are far away because uh, I'm like I volunteer for that because yeah. I'm like hey podcast time. long drive yeah. you can listen yeah. to something yeah has it ruined your life being on the show now so this is kind of pointless to listen to your no. favorite podcast you can't <laughs> no, listen anymore or still, do you go back I still confession time you still yeah. go back and listen oh, to your absolutely. own show yeah. yeah. You like to hear your own voice. Something to do. Except for the ones he's yeah. on. So since I never farming, listen to the ones I'm on. I really don't. You're don't, on every episode. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I really don't listen to the ones that I'm on. I'm li- I listen to the ones that I miss. Right. Yeah. I usually, if I listen to the ones that I am on, it's because something like pretty funny. Like, listen, like I'll go back later tonight, listen to the bonus content on the Patreon, just because that was quality. And that was quality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you for selling that, Mason. I, I thought so as well. I was speechless for about a minute and a half because... <laughs> Because her hands of leather. <laughs> and they will eventually turn to velvet. 
I'm really hoping that your summer summer turns. I'm out not shameless. You if, <laughs> if you don't think rape is funny, <laughs> you have to listen to. The if you don't <laughs> think so, it, you're much too young to feel this damn old. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Mason. You got anything? Final thoughts? Anything uh, we forgot? How did we join well, your VBS? I, what church is this at? The Spiceland Friends. Um, we're you, out there. Oh, you Quaker. We're out there yeah. uh, putting on a vacation Bible school. Um, are do you? Are you a Quaker on purpose? Is this what you want? Or just by geographical Or is this location? just like, well, I'm from Spice and so, I have to go here? Because so, <laughs> really, everybody else does. There's, there's Did Darren two other force churches. this on you? Did Darren I, Jacobs yeah. force this on you? It's the only socially acceptable thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of... I. Uh, there's three other churches. What if you find... Spice what do you find a nice Catholic girl? Are you going to go be all Notre Dame? My and, grandfather and, and above was Catholic. Mine too. Um, and I went to... Um, mass with him a couple times and it just do you know how to cross yourself really not gonna try just felt weird every time they told you that you were eating someone's body and drinking their blood it was <sighs> interesting but i went do you when not, i was younger. you don't do communion at the uh, friends church uh Your quaker communion, quaker communion is very different than traditional you, communion you sit in silence and reflect there's no the reflection uh, times yeah. there's no cracker or wine no or grape juice it's a it's baptist. what's called spiritual communion yep so I, uh, the Baptists are nice I've, and lazy. If you're a Catholic, you have to go to the front and you have to go get blessed. If you're a Baptist, you can wait in the, wait in your seat and they'll bring the stuff to you. They just pass it along. Grow, just like, just like when you pat, you put the money in the plate, they, they, they pass along the, the tray. Uh, along. Growing up yeah. at the church that I went to growing up, we had, uh, each family had their own goblet that would get like their family wine glass that would get filled. And then my dad made the bread. So we didn't have like pre-made little wafers. My right. dad spent the whole night before making the bread, and it was, it was so good. It was like this, <laughs> it was like this whole grain like uh, I, I real bet there's thin some, pita bread. I bet there's some of the church women. They're like, well, we won't need that one except for Christmas and Easter for that. <laughs> <laughs> was, that was good bread. I, I kind of, I've never really belonged to a certain. Um, I started going to the friends, and I enjoyed it. So I've been there. But final thoughts: one. Um, when was it last week or the week before? I think on the bonus content, Dakota called me out and never answered it, and I'm still waiting on what that was supposed to be. Um, it was a, it was just a joke. Um, I was, I actually wound up it was like he, his backpedal. Said now. another I, thing for Mason. I, and I wound up it. using the same joke in the regular show, except I else. substituted you for, or I substituted substituted Chris for you. So. I didn't know didn't what the work. joke was. The joke was that uh, I was going to just resend your position as intern. But oh. since Chris didn't show up either, I said I was just going Chris to... Chris showed up at the very end. Yeah. said I was we going to resend Chris's button. position as producer. Okay. So, no, so it's not as important I hope you I feel thought. at peace now. Are Thursdays, I do. Are Thursdays difficult for you? Is that the problem? I... I in about... How can we make this internship in about work two better weeks, for you? It will be fine. Do you need um, volunteer days? I need PTO three day <laughs> paid. When does when does Purdue steal you away again? August nineteenth. I'll move in within that week before. Dorms but, again? Uh depends. You don't Been know selling yet? all your furniture. I'll be on my own. Yeah, what the hell is up with this? Every time I turn around, you're selling a ping pong table or an end table. Well, are you, are you hey, trying to I make a ping pong table you, needed you to get out of the one, garage? You, you I made offered you a reasonable rate for, for that table. Fifty cents? <laughs> reasonable rate. Fifty cents. It's more than my what mom I'm, literally commented on it and said. I'll give you fifty. I'll take fifty dollars for it. I'm like, mom, there's literally a period in front of it. I know. I saw that. That was funny. I said, I said, there's a period. It's and I was like, as soon as you comment on it, I ignored it anyways. My second final Ouch. thought is <laughs> is the Columbus Vanguards have made it to the national championship. No kidding. Professional women's football. Are you serious? Down in Orlando, Florida. The, wait, 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 wait. The Knights Town of Columbus. What? Ha 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 ha. That's my joke and I'm going <laughs> to The Knights Town of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus. Okay. He's I have a, a card for the Knights of Columbus to go play bingo there. Um Heathen. but <laughs> they have made it if you uh it's according to them it's 15 hour drive and it's 930 miles to go play professional women's football. Where they have do they a play? Go f- It's somewhere south. Somewhere. They say no donation is too little. So if you want to go to their GoFundMe, it is mm-hmm. uh, just look up the Columbus Vanguard's National Conference Championship. I'm sure they would take anything. I donate a dollar fifty to this every month, so you can donate five for 
one time. I'm not forcing that upon you, but that is a big that that's a big thing in Henry County now. And you know what? I bet our professional women's football team our that's actually based in Bartholomew County, but plays here. I bet nobody knows that. Everybody that listens to this show knows that. Thousands of people know this now. We have it more than the uh, we we cover this stuff more than what the Courier Times does. So, absolutely, we are oh. the best news source of Henry County. It's official. Wow. I don't know. That's the Titan Times. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Titan Times. Is True. that the exponent of Try? It, it's the uh, Try Elementary School newspaper, <laughs> which is no longer running. It has been shut down because but Mr. Jeffries left. Is Mr. No one else left. took up the torch. Shameful. Dakota. Looks like I gotta go be a fourth grade teacher, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that goes back to the we. Uh, <clears throat> what makes you uh, what makes you happy and gives you? <sighs> you I wouldn't have money. the independence. You got to make enough money. All Kids, right. this is podcast time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't grade your papers. I've got to go entertain hey, them. them. <laughs> I got a new match on Tinder. Ooh, let's. Oh God, how do you do that? <laughs> 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 oh man do you think mason and guffy are competing for the same girls on the tinder i think we should try to intentionally match with somebody the same and then <laughs> both take them out on a date and see who wins <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like content and content jerry loves this idea i would love that that's exactly what we're looking for in a I, is, I will you just no. passed your internship buddy. time out we need to find somebody we know personally that is willing to go on a date with both of us so we I, don't have to go through the tender crap I will hide and underneath the, each individual table with the Zoom recorder we will need so I can to send, pick up the conversation. We will need to send a camera. Crew. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. We should probably... Henry County Bachelorette. <laughs> I wear suits on dates. Is Kelsey Myers still watching the <laughs> you can, podcast? You can, uh... Cousin Kelsey, we're going to need you to... <laughs> we, we have we... a science experiment. Hold on. Hey, Mason. Do you, now, do we have to set a budget for this? Because... It you're, goes on. It's you're funded a, by hey, the Patreon. Hey, you're members. a high school... <laughs> you're, a high, you're a college student. I don't know how well... Our finances. My phone work. funds are low, um, so. But we will. I think we should do that. I'm all in. Yeah, I, this is a great idea. We've uh, Guffy and what the hell are you people doing? We can over take there? volunteers. Are there any? Uh, are there any girls out there that would volunteer uh, for this? Uh, of audio to play for this fans, maybe. Yeah. Any? What was the the grace? The Grace Woman, blonde. Grace Singer. We I definitely hit on her in in the chat, and she told me no. So Grace Grace turned you down. You remember she I not said into young nineteen year old I, boys. I don't remember what the exact conversation was, but I said something, and she said, "Well, preferably." I said, "But I'm cute," or something like that, and she said she had a Bumble account. You're talking about our Snapchat group. Did you find her on the Bumble? I didn't look. I didn't really. Pay this attention. Is a, this is Dakota, what I, have you done? What's, this is how I imagine the date going. With who? Me or Chris? Uh, take your pick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Are you Charlie Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Um, You're Jackie. Yes, I am. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, this... I, I was r running. He's sweating <laughs> profusely. <laughs> profusely. Bleeding. Oh, shit. Is it bleeding again? <laughs> Sorry. I'm these Turn it up a little, things, Chris. You know, I run into like like a lot of like hornets in my line of work, and I get stung up like bad all over my face and stuff, and then you know it starts bleeding. <laughs> oh, sounds interesting. Yeah. What is it that you do again? I work. I'm like a janitor. I'm um, I'm a full on rapist. Children, <laughs> 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 that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say you're a full-on rapist? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I help. I help people. You know what I mean. I'm. I'm a, a full. A full. In, a full in. Um, a philanthropist. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It gets. <laughs> A full-on rapist? <laughs> All right, that's enough, Chris. Oh, wait. No, now that we're there, I've got to send... We need it in the comment sections. Who is that? <laughs> Guffy or me? I think it would be even at a uh, zero because I don't we think we put down anybody, but I Guffy, what where would you go in Henry if if you had to take a girl in Henry I feel? County? Blah 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 is a handsome professional man, and I'm only used to well none of those things. 
Okay, Lindsay, are you forgetting that I was a professional twice over, an analyst and a therapist, the world's first analrapist? Yes, and you were almost arrested for those business cards. Yes, no, it did not look good on paper, but I didn't stop because of the police inquiries. I stopped to raise our little daughter. Well, Mom's probably right. I couldn't even stand up to a seal. I don't really deserve a medal or a party. No, you deserve this. Here, take my business card. <laughs> No, no, it's pronounced a now uh, It wasn't really the pronunciation that bothered me. <laughs> Take off my acting pants for a moment and pull my now stocking over my head. George Michael has been acting strange lately. Arrested Development. <clears throat> yes. Guffy, if yes. you had to take a woman out in Henry County, where would it be? In Henry County? Henry County. I Think mean, no, very, actually, very carefully about we're not, this answer, Chris. Henry, okay, we'll do Henry County. Yes. Well, obviously it's gonna oh, it's gonna differ on the person that I'm taking out because you have to find out what their interests are. No, if you have no background, she just said, "Yeah, let's go on a date." Primo, where are you going? You're going. Good God, folks! Man, probably Twin Lions. No, it's Montgomery. Montgomery's Steakhouse. <laughs> Good. Jesus, Murphy. I, it's not much better than why I was gonna take mine. <laughs> This is, I'm pretty sure this is why we're single. Gibson Arena. <laughs> the nacho cheese and the, we're getting, the you snow get, cones. I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to I, I we're gonna skate to Justin Bieber's if, baby. If everything, I can, if everything goes well, you're going back across the street to Weenie World, aren't you? I, I just see a if the very, night goes well. If we we got to be out by about 8.30 so we can make it to Weenie World by 9. I, but, I, can, hold on. I, I can imagine a very disappointed young woman... Who's just kind of standing against the railing, and up comes Mason, and he's sweating profusely. And I'm just like, and he bumps up, like slams against the wall. And he's like, "Hey, babe, he just won the race. <laughs> Want to go get some popcorn?" <laughs> no, I'm like, "Hey, babe, guess you just see me." Oh win wait, the limbo. never mind. This is my song. You sure you don't want to skate? Did you just see me win that limbo contest? <laughs> I'm Did very, you see me I'm, leave my legs outside of the cones and do the splits almost? I'm very bendy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get nachos at the bar. The my Trojan card gives us free breadsticks <laughs> if we order a pizza slice. Oh, well, God. if there's any we single ladies it, that want to uh, take on this <laughs> this like challenge, I guess. Then God bless your soul. <laughs> Somebody's had grace. <laughs> Somebody's had grace right now. I uh, I I'll let I'll let Grace know that her services are needed. <laughs> Do you guys want this the separate nights or the same night? You're gonna make Grace. I'm not taking anybody on a day. lunch date. I'm barely up by eleven thirty. <laughs> if we get Grace involved, this could be great um, <laughs> viral content for the Bob and Tom show as well. Oh my god! All right, uh, did we do final thoughts from from Dakota? Don't think so. Did you have anything, or could we just? Oh, uh, Kate, Kate is tag Grace. Poor Grace. Uh, this, this, <laughs> this poor woman. <laughs> She's going to pretend not to know any of you when this is over. Well, she doesn't I, know me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had something, um, but it's just We totally blew it out of the water, now. Guffy. <laughs> it's just totally gone now. This is it was good. It was good. This is a good show. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our episode on employment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it turned into... <laughs> Employment and love connection. <laughs> it turned into the Bachelorette of Henry County. Ladies Miss and gentlemen, after 8 p.m., the the socks come heaven off. Heaven helps us. Help it. Heaven help us. Next week episode. I don't know. Is it that one one eighteen next week? Yep. Mark Brim is going to be the special guest. He's uh, he's an administrator at a university uh, or does PR marketing whatever for Earlham. So he's uh, he's on summer vacation. And, Earlham. And yeah, he's uh, he's one of those rich Quakers. Hey, you, you, know know <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? Mark Brim coming on. Uh, dreamsicles. Dreamsicle. If anyone Ice doesn't cream. follow Mark, follow him friend him on Facebook. He makes me laugh Mark is four to five times a week. Now, didn't, Mark is wasn't fantastic. he the one who had the big hilarious. video over, was it in Rush County where... Yeah, when um, the, yeah. Bo and Luke Duke, or Bo Duke, Bo came, Duke came, came to Rush County. I did yes. watch that video. Yeah, yeah. Mark And is, he didn't uh, even invite the Ball Hog of Liberty there. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, beat on him about that. But, uh, we're looking We're looking forward to Mark joining us. Uh, he was he complained last uh, early, I guess earlier this week saying that he had nothing going on for about 20 days in a row. So I said, well... Come on Thursday and said I can't. I'm busy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so then we got I, we, he bumped. We we so had to have Mason. So we'll have uh, we'll have Brim on next week. I get told constantly by 
folks that Mark Bram is one of their favorite guests. He's fantastic. I don't Every think time I... that he comes on, like the numbers shoot up on download numbers. Fantastic for He ratings. tells everybody he works with at Earlham to watch yeah. in their group text. Well, he also has got like 18 different Facebook profiles. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday and Percy, he, Percy he, will join us. He adds them all to the group chat that we set up prior to the show, and he interacts as all of them in different all of, personas. All of the personalities get involved. It is... He, he will have full-on conversations between three different people, <laughs> so which are I, actually so I all to, him. I could take experience this next week. Not yeah. Mark, personally, but that. I want to see it. You're going to show up? You're going to make it Thursday? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that, we, uh, we know we've got Mark Brim, and we'll see what else happens. We will see you all next week. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com.